So here we are. It is Friday, September 19th. We're at Pond 2 on the Bidwell Ranch. The B-O-W Fly Fishing Workshop. Just put a big circle there. Now, I want, without me saying anything, I want you to tell me what you're observing. Lots of fish eating. Most of the water's coming around, bringing the food down here on either side, like these little eddies. Right. But what do you see? Do you see food, or what do you see? Like, what's fish. that? Fish. Fish. Okay. Now, when, well, there's a wake. You got a bigger fish in here. You the see, see it happening? Can we say there's about a dozen fish in here? At yeah. least. Okay. Now, now you see that surface break? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Note that because all the rest of the disturbances are different. That surface break left a small group of bubbles on top, which to us indicates that fish took something off of the actual surface. If you don't, see, if you see rings, but you see no fish, no part of the fish, then he's working a little bit below the whole surface and occasionally you will see a dorsal fin which means he's taking it right at the surface so we automatically know that except for one fish that took something off of the surface all of these fish are fishing in the top one foot and some of them are fishing right More in the film indicator the fly and you would hang so a maybe a midge or something below it but this uh, this will allow us to get some visual now what we're going to go through here is three things rather quickly on um, on on fishing, and the one is going to be fishing on the surface, then fishing with streamers, which is more like a bait imitation of a fish. But this is more traditional in terms of an insect on the surface, and uh, then we're going to do subsurface nymphing uh, demonstration. Now, you've been out on the lawn and the <laughs> meadow practicing, <laughs> and all of your casts have been pretty much. Now I'm fishing instead of talking. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot of the same techniques, only I've got a subsurface fly, but I have it under a dry fly, using the dry fly as a float or an indicator, and the nymph is down below going at the same speed that fly is, which is the speed of the current. It's all the aquatic insects that are actually coming down in the water. This probably needs our room here for all these. Oh, perfect. See him work, how he works it lines, mm -hmm. he's stripping it in. That fly, for every time he stripped, was jumping toward him. He was going to work close. He can't stand it. He went right over there for that hog. Is that risky? Notice he keeps that rod tip in the water so he's that straight line to the trout. When you're fishing that way, you can't have a death grip on your line when you're stripping it. You really have to have soft fingers so that you're not grasping the line hard, but it's soft. Because with that straight line, that fish is going to hit that thing and there is no give of a fly rod. It's you, the line, and the fish and they can break off real easily. So we talk about soft fingers. So that strip is not with a lot of tension on it. So when the fish hits, it might even give a little bit towards the fish. Um, thereby, thereby keeping it from breaking off. Yeah. It's necessary to keep that straight line. You notice he's got his rod in the water, not above the rim. Rod tip in the water.
still working out there. I only have one grass. He hadn't put them down yet. They're still there. Oops. I'm glad this is on video. <laughs> I think I just saw the fish swim free. away. Yeah. You notice he's, even though he got it free, he's still fishing. It's free, all right. It's in there. Yeah. All the flies in there? Yep.